Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We are going to do chapter one of the old Gonzo Witches. As you can tell, it's not coming out quick. Don't expect it to. I'm not going to do what I've done before. I'm taking my time with this one. Either way, this is chapter one called Rumors and Omens. Here we go. You're getting slow, brother. Your knees have spent too many hours bent under tables instead of bending on the open field. Vincent Kai Trodare reached for another spear to hurl at his brother. You might be right. Why, I took to translating history into our language for our children and future generations to have easy access to our hard-earned lessons seems like nonsense. Jacob Vin Algonza returned an unbroken spear to his brother with a hard toss and a groan of exertion. He was getting older, and his limbs less responsive. There's an easy one for you. The brothers had tossed spears at each other since they were small. They used to practice for hours to increase their skill, for not just the toss for accuracy, but also dodging and catching the swift flying projectiles. It was a dangerous game, and an exercise for only the very skilled but such was the need for leaders, captains, and potential rulers of the Kingdom of Ag. Seven cities were all that made up their holdings, including the secret fortress of Webin. Webin was the seat of the kings and queens, well secreted in a carved out cliffside, made into homes, and the grand granite palace. Here in this canyon of high cliffs and narrow passage, crystal clear springs and waterways, the two brothers lived most of their lives. I guess I'm not the only one slow. You missed. Kai had missed the catch. It was the first time in decades. Looking down at his palm, where blood started to freely flow from a cut, dug shallow from the spear tip, Kai called out in disappointment. It seems so. Do your magic before the blood flow stops. It doesn't appear to be too deep. Finn threw down the last spear into the dirt where he stood, then jogged off to his brother's side. Mother says that she has heard whisperings of the doings of the Nature Caller. She sent out investigators to discover the truth of it. As he spoke, Finn touched the blood of his brother's wound. As he did so, the red, life-giving flow turned instantly to gold, pure and gleaming in the midday sun. This tingling never loses its potency. Simply marvelous. It has been some time for me. As it turned to fate, those who I associate with are less prone to injury than I. For a lark, it would be nice if someone besides me would bleed. Kai watched as the wound quickly cauterized under the pressure from his brother's hand. Spend more time at home. You still have a young son. He should know his father better. Besides, he is not a red. You can bleed for each other. It was a jest and received as such. The truth of it was that both brothers had three children without red hair, and as the magic had fallen upon the family, those who were born without red hair gained the ability to turn blood into gold. Vin and Kai were the first blood witches in the family, and each had several children with the same magic at work within them. Their mother was born under the Mage Star and had great powers. One of the times that she used her power was to allow her sons, Vin and Kai, to be born. But the magic had lasting effects that would be felt for thousands of years. The flow stopped too quickly. Have you had water this morning? Because clearly you haven't had enough to drink. This wound should still be bleeding. Vin held up his brother's hand for a closer inspection. You're dehydrated. Severely. What's the matter, Kai? It has to do with those rumors. Mother has me working with General Dawson. There are troubling stories coming from his spies. We might be headed for war. Kai spoke with a sullen and worried pitch. Vin let go of his brother's hand and divided up the gold that had been freshly made between the two. I understand. No wonder you're not paying attention well this morning. 
Let's fetch a good meal, then we can talk about what needs to be prepared. An hour later, and after finishing off several boiled eggs and potatoes, the brothers found themselves alone in the kitchen of the palace. The staff had left after being paid with the new gold that had been freshly converted from Kai's blood. I've never known you to worry, at least not like this. Even when your fifth child was born with such difficulty, you never looked so sullen. Vin's remarks came as he pushed away from the central cutting table to lean against the carved granite wall. Kai remained where he was, with both hands on the center table, as if it were the only thing that kept his feet beneath him. Fatigue was clearly his companion. It seems that there is a real possibility that Ag will be defeated. Dundruff and Senton have joined in league with each other. They aim to push west. They are coming with their combined forces. King Nulls fell to their advances just two days ago. Word is that they spared only the very young. The deaths of the rest were not quick and not easy. Now the entirety of the capital is being broken down. What was once a beautiful city of wood and stone is being dismantled, burned, and what useful bits remain is being shipped to Senton. They will be coming, brother. Our best estimates give the city of Cyrodiil just two weeks, maybe less. What of General Braxton? Where is he? Finn began to feel the weight of Kai's troubles. Braxton is in Oslo, working for a treaty with them on the south. They have food, but what Braxton is shopping for are mercenaries. Fortunately, thanks to our father's curse, we have all the gold that we could ever need to buy such things. Unfortunately, nearly every other kingdom knows this and wants to take it from us by force. I don't think we're going to survive this one, Vin. Unless we are given divine help, I feel we are close to suffering the same fate as Knowles and his people. Vin stood up and away from the wall, then placed his hands on the table as well. He looked at his hands for a moment, still stained with tiny specks of gold from his brother's blood. I'm not a poet, I'm not a strategist, but I am a man of faith, and I have faith that something will save us. We've been surrounded before. Father knew how to stave off the invaders on several occasions. We are his bloodline and sons. You are the Dauphin, making you the last Troder. I am the youngest and last Olganza by our mother's name. Our family will live on, you will see. I hope your faith is sufficient for the entirety of the kingdom. We need it, my brother. Kai finally lifted his face to Vin and revealed the single tear that would be allowed to fall. He swore it would be his last. With slow and quiet footsteps, a lady in her mid-forties walked up to Kai and took his arm in hers. Listen to your brother. Heed his words, my husband. I feel what he does. We will survive this, as well as our kingdom. I sense a great future for you and for Ag. Now come out of this gloomy kitchen. Your people want you in the throne room. It seems a young couple needs your blessing and sealing for marriage. Put on a smile and make them happy. As you command, my keeper. It was a name that Kai gave to his wife in jest. She, like his brother's wife, was a commoner. The same as all of Ag. All were equal and all shared the burdens except the title of king, queen, or military ranks. Kai and Vin fit in with the people like family and not like royalty at all. The tiny nation of Ag was unique in this regard. The people were happy, though they were often oppressed by their neighbors who sought after their gold, farmlands, timber, and northern coastlines. This year had brought hardship from the force sent from Dundriff that was specifically tasked to destroy the crops of Ag just before harvest. The force was successful before they were driven off. Now Ag suffered from the early effects of insufficient food supplies. Fishing in the north was pushed to help bring the food stores for winter up to fill the anticipated needs of the people. But the reality was that starvation for many in Ag was almost guaranteed. 
a hard winter was coming. End of chapter one. Be patient, more will come.